um, and hotel accommodations, and all of that is three twenty five for the two days. So you get everything included, and uh, it's been so amazing. We've probably been going for the last seven years, and every year it's just something incredible. New. So they I mean, still, they good. still have the payment plan available, or was that in January? I think they do still have the payment plan available. Yeah. 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 It teaches Jeff all kinds of great stuff. I mean, he comes back and he's just a whole new husband. Clearly, so, his yeah. focus is on not bringing clothes to show. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, especially the music and games portion does not require clothes. I mean, I'm going to Sorry. Okay. This is going to be bad. Thank God this is going to be I just came in at the, at the range of time. Yeah. Sodom there, and Gomorrah. There's, there's a theme going on, by the way. There's a theme that I'm working. So the on. five, the five love languages. Um, if you don't know Jeff's, you will now. It's physical touch and uh, words of affirmation. So there's five, right? And his are words of affirmation and physical touch, and mine are words of affirmation and physical touch. So when we're in our groove and circle, we're saying very nice things to each other and being very nice to each other. And when Touching we're not, each other. when we're not, then we are out of sort from that. And we went through the drive-through right now because we we missed lunch and we got some chicken nuggets and they were these two people. It was so amazing. I tell Jeff, they it was at Wendy's. We grabbed some nuggets, went through the drive-through, and the the server and the manager both came to the window and just started pouring words of affirmation into us. Like you guys look amazing. You guys look wonderful. You should be on the court. We're like you don't know what you're doing for us. Like you're feeding our emotional love language right now. That was pretty cool. And it was amazing. And I said words of affirmation and acts of kindness, no matter where we go. I really want to be aware of giving it out to people because it really does something for anyone. So well, when you that. guys going through something and then they just all of a sudden God kind of prompted them yeah. to like pour. We it just in went. We just went through. Yeah, and we okay. were just through stayed, the Yeah, we just went through the drive through really quick and just gave them as we were driving. God like, finds yeah. you anywhere. Yeah, and, and we were like, you thank you, thank you. <laughs> and I've had a little cold, so I'm going to ask you to. Um, to please um, excuse me if I walk away to blow my nose because um, we, Mike and I were at a conference with about 20,000 Keller Williams agents. I was there too. Oh, yeah, Jeff was there too. Sorry. Sorry. Jeff, Mike, and I. We're going to make it like you two were together. Yeah. Like, okay. Jeff, Jeff, Mike, and I were, um, all three of us Squirrel. were at with another 20,000 agents, and I had some close friends that were coughing and hacking, and it was like, gosh. And then the weather changed on us, like, I mean, we would leave in the morning, and it would be fine, and we'd walk back to our hotel, and it would be, like, so cold and windy and wet, and it was just interesting. Okay, let's get naked. Okay. So the reason we keep saying that word is because there is something to that. Can you? No, we need to pray first. I know, but I want to grab the book. Could you grab it? Uh, our book? No, but there is a book in there. <laughs> You're so silly. <laughs> the book is called Naked Marriage. That's why we keep saying this. So we're going to talk about that today. So we we start every class with uh, with prayer. Um, so if you'd like to join us, yes. Thank you, beloved Father God, for this opportunity to come together uh, in your name, the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Michelle and I always, always, always pray that you guide our words, our minds, our thoughts, um, our mouth, and our hearts to communicate the words that you want us to say, the words that you need to have spoken in this setting, in this class, that uh, the, the ideas that are shared, the experiences that are shared, the suggestions that are shared are not of us, but they are of you, beloved Father God, that uh, the intentions of, of this class are healing, love, forgiveness, vulnerability, and love. Because, beloved Father God, you've put us together to becoming one with you at the center as the strongest strand in the three-strand cord. Thank you, beloved Father God, for this opportunity. Thank you uh, for your blessings and that you bless health, peace, prosperity uh, on each and every single one of uh, the, the people in this class. Amen. 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 watching these four minutes. And those that come in a little later, absolutely. Um, so, yes, I love playing on words, and this is kind of a, a really fun book. Uh, I, I love the, the title, The Naked Marriage. Uh, it's by Dave and Ashley Willis. Can I talk about them a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, they're an amazing couple that work with Jimmy Evans, and we're going to show you the cover again. Um, they work very close. They work in marriage um, with Jimmy Evans and um, Karen Evans, and they wrote a book, and they are going to be here in a few weeks, and we're trying to get them to come to Saturday session also. Sunday class will be sharing the same book, and we're 
um, starting off just a little early. We were going to wait one more week, but we got them in, and we were super excited. And they're an amazing couple that have been around Jimmy Evans for a long time, so they have a lot to pour out and a lot to talk about, and it's exciting. It's <coughs> exciting, exciting. So if we, if those are, like, Jeff, you bought them. How much were they? Eight, ten dollars from Amazon? Twelve dollars on $12 Amazon. Twelve dollars on Amazon. Yeah. So um, if you guys want to pick one up. So when, when we use the expression or the word naked, what does that usually bring to mind, first and foremost? What's the first thing that pops into your head? Shout out, guys. Vulnerability. Vulnerability. Sex. What else, guys? What else? What does it say to you? Vulnerability. What about you guys? Nothing hidden. Nothing hidden. I love that. What about you guys? trying to be so clean, aren't they? I know. Nothing hidden. No, we were just laughing at it. Adam and Eve. That's beautiful. Exactly where I wanted to go. What about Jen and Mike? What about you guys? Sex. 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 Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Girl, I was waiting for someone to say that. Me and you have so much of the same things on that stuff. Um, Mike's love language is physical touch, and Jen's is words of affirmation. So we've been been promising we're going to talk a lot about that through the next couple of months, so we want to just kind of share that. What does it mean for you? Too. All great words. Yeah. And if, if we go back to, to Genesis in the Bible, Adam and Eve in, in Eden, which was God's perfect world, they were completely naked. There was no shame until the human, I don't know what word you want to use with that, but human experience, sin, became a part of Adam and Eve's world. And so they started covering themselves. They started becoming uh, shameful. And God put us on this on this world naked, born into this world naked and shameless as a child. So when we talk about the naked marriage, the whole idea with the naked marriage, in the simplest of terms, and I, I love this part because a lot of what we talk about in this class and a lot of what we talk about in marriage is the relationship that God wants us to have with him. And God wants us to come to him with all things, in all things, and ask for all things in humility. Because like the loving father that he is, unconditionally, he, asks, he says, ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be open. So the relationship that God, and I love how this all ties together, the the relationship that God wants us to have with him is the same type of relationship that he puts us in in, um, a marriage with our spouse. I love that because we've been talking a lot about in so many couples, and thank you guys for sharing a few weeks ago about money, and we talked a lot about the things that you guys talk about in your marriage, and um, it is so, um, so much of a lie from the enemy that keeps us in hiding to be able to be fully transparent with our spouse and with our friends or with, um, you know, people that we're very close to because of that word, and that word, when we, when I hear it, it's uncomfortable because I always assume, in my mind, my programming says it's sex, and it's not. It's fully transparent. I asked Jeff some questions today, and I love us learning these books, and the only reason we read them, and I'll be full transparent with you, is because we teach it. That's why we never want to stop teaching, whether it's on this platform or somewhere else, because we would stop being students, and we have- Or at least not nearly on the level. Right. We would be picking up a different book, a marriage book, every few months and everything else and diving into them. And ask. I asked him three questions today. I had never asked him. Have I ever asked you those questions? Uh, a couple of them in one shape or another, but not directly like that. No. Right. And on the sheet, he put them on there, and they talk about, and I'm jumping ahead, <laughs> is um, does he feel lovable? Because it says, am I lovable? And, it said, and he said, oh, absolutely I'm lovable. And then I asked him the next one, am I worth, are you worthy? Do you feel worthy in this relationship? And do you feel worthy? Well, I didn't say the relationship. You're right. I said, do I feel worthy? 
Do you feel worthy? And then you pause for a while. Do you know? Did you notice that? Yeah, because I went through the entire catalog in my brain of all the different aspects and all the interactions I have with people and 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 where I want to go, what I want to do, who I want to talk to. And there are times where I don't feel worthy. Right. And the next question would would be um, would they still would they still want me if I saw if they saw the whole me? And there's so Maybe. many of us. Yes, the whole not me physically, of course, but just exposed, vulnerable, transparent. And your answer was probably not. Right. And I said, do you feel that same? Because I asked him about people, and then I asked him about our marriage, and I said, do you feel that way about me? He's like, absolutely. And I thought, wow, because we have a pretty fantastic relationship. I mean, we are not perfect by no means, and we have fought and we have fallen apart. We came back together, we've apologized, and we continue to do that. Fail forward. But it's interesting that your spouse still feels if he was everything that was the most vulnerable pieces and icing everything, that I still may not love everything about him. And I could say yes on those same questions to him. And um, if he asked me, I mean, so it's just interesting that we don't ask enough deep questions to each other. Another part of this, which I'm jumping ahead, is I asked him, what was his deepest fear? And have you guys asked each other that? What's your deepest fear? So you guys, have you guys? Have you ever asked him his deepest fear? Or does he know your deepest fear? Yeah, and have you guys asked each other that? Just this morning? Oh, that's nice. Do you guys want to share it now? Okay. I had a dream last night, and it just shook me to my core. And it was seeing her on a roof on a rainy day and trying to get down and she was trying to get on the ladder, slip, and I tried to hold her, and I saw her slip and fall all the way down to the ground. Slip. And I woke up, and I was so scared. And then I was holding her, and I said, my, and my greatest fear said, I don't want to, you know, I want to go first. Mm. I don't want to be a widower yeah. and stuff like that. So, Bertha, be Bertha, she goes, okay, what do you want me to do, stab you? Uh, which we don't condone, of course. <laughs> but I'm just saying that was my greatest fear. And then she says the same thing. It's just like, you know, and we, we touch on it from time to time, and it's just like, okay, we do it when we're together. But, you know, it's just, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to leave her. I love, so your, your deepest fear is that you never want to live without her. Absolutely. And she never wants to live without you. Jeff's deepest fear, do you mind me sharing? Sure. One of them was, yeah, one of them is that he never wants to die alone. And I think, and he says, I've always felt that that's part of acceptance. That's part of acceptance about him being accepted and people loving him for who he is and him never dying alone and him not being left. Now, we've shared this before, is Jeff has, um, in the past, that he still has to be aware of, is he struggles with abandonment. So, of course, that would be attached to what his fear is because, the enemies try to tell him that he is alone, and he is going to be left, and he has been left, and he's not worthy to be able to sustain an amazing relationship and be loved for who he truly is. And God has been working through him for a long time, even since a little boy. He was telling me how worthy you are. Mm -hmm. And isn't that amazing, though, when we went full circle, because we asked these questions today, that it does all tie back into whatever your programming is that you have always believed? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's what being vulnerable and transparent, that's what this book is all about. And we're going to get into this more and more and more. And I, I really, really pray that each one of you take this journey with us and take the opportunity to ask these kind of questions, to be vulnerable like this. Because it's if there's any hurt, if there's any lies, if there's any transgressions that have happened in, in your in your relationship, it's going to make those conversations uncomfortable. It's the human experience. Right. And I have also shared with you in the past, and we're kind of talking a little bit about more because this is the naked um, truth. Naked marriage is what they're called. Naked. Naked. Naked marriage. Naked marriage. Um, is that I show up, and the sign I wear is I can do it all by myself. Because we came from dysfunction. And we came from, we need to survive this. So when it gets tough, because I know Jen's story, is we're like, we can do this. We, we, we can handle it. Just put the backpack on. We can go do this. 
So what it does to him is it makes his abandonment show up even more because he's like, she doesn't need me. And that's so far from the truth, but that's what the enemy tries to do. But that's how it comes out. It's just the same. Yeah. Very independent. I don't, and I felt like if, you know, if he had a little more resources or something, he wouldn't need me. And she right. wouldn't give me the time of day. And that's how I feel. Yes. And look how the enemy works on that. Because we asked you guys to do a study, you know, of, uh, not a study, but to go deeper into in your, your marriage. And we asked you to talk about it. And we didn't know it was money. And she's like, no way. And the enemy's like, yeah, because she doesn't want you to touch your money because she doesn't need you. She needs to take care of herself. And that's where the enemy continues to play in. But the thing about it, we took a, faith, a, a, faith, a leap of faith. We put a savings together. Yay, everybody come around. So see, I know where the money came from because God says when you two show up and trust me and you allow the enemy to step That's aside, you, I will do anything that your heart desires. And the thing is, we get in each other's way and we stop each other's. So you guys all know that Jeff drives so amazing. And Jeff is just like the best driver in the world. And I just love I thought him. we were going to get away and, with the driving thing this week. And today, on the way up here, he was like, they went slow down. He gives me the whole narrative of every driver around us. Now, I'm not paying attention to him because it's not my thing. I mean, I, yeah, he's like, they just went forward. They slowed down. They stopped. Get out of the way. I mean, I'm hearing the whole story. And I'm like, why don't you just ask off for whatever you need? What did you do? But okay, I need everybody to either pull over to the side, get off the highway, or get out of my way. <laughs> and what happened right after so that? The slow people got out of our way. But the blink around, just, I mean, kidding you, like two it's seconds. It's true. And I'm like, it's true. Now, I can harp on him and tell and him. And she really enjoyed the truth of it. <laughs> yeah, and I just said, because it's the point of what we focus on is going to expand, and what we ask for, that was a struggle, and you guys took it to God, and you did something, you said, hey, she's not ready to do this, but we'll take a baby step towards it, and God says, let me bless what you two did together. He this is a always, huge truth. This really is a huge truth. He will always bless what you yeah. two decided to do together. That's exactly right. And, and when you are in unison, when you're naked, transparent, vulnerable, um, equally yoked, or in sync, whatever description you'd like to use, when things are just kind of going great, because you're prayed up, remember, it starts with prayer in the morning. Even if it's, thank you, God, for letting me step out of bed. Thank you for letting me breathe another day. Um, one of my prayers, which I talked to Michelle about this, is I, I pray every single morning, God, help me to be the husband that Michelle needs me to be. And I didn't I, know that till today. And, and, and I, I do that every single morning. But the point is, is please be aware of this. Be aware, be aware, be aware. Open your mind to it. Open your eyes and your ears because the more that you look for it, the more that you're going to see it. And I love watching God work. Love watching God work. Um, when we agree, when we're working together towards something, when, you know, even with a little bit of, oh, I didn't want to do it, Michelle suggested, well, Ask for them to get out of your way. Ask God to get them out of your way. I said, okay, please have them pull over, move out of the way, or get off the highway. And it went like that. And, I, and that's I, just a little example of him, because he's like, I can leave him there to teach him patience, but he's teaching him even more to trust and believe. You ask for other things, ask for this. See, when we complain, we remain. So when you complain about your spouse, or you complain about your best friend, or you complain about your job, you remain. But when you praise and ask, he will show up and show out. I mean, what a testimony. You don't know where the money came from, but all of a sudden it went from 200 to 2,700. That's what he will do. Yeah. He, he, can't, he can't do anything. He's a perfect gentleman. He won't do anything until you show him and tell him what you believe. And trust me, Lisa Bevere said, if your prayers are not scaring you, your prayers aren't big enough. And I sat there for about 10 minutes thinking, why would my prayers scare me? Why would I ever be afraid to pray? But what she was saying is, I always pray to keep us healthy, to bless us, and this and that. And he, she says, pray that I want Jeff and I's prayers that we give a thousand, a thousand books, free copies of our marriage books to people. Well, we don't even have a marriage book written yet. 
That's that's the scary prayer. And we'll do that, God, by December 2020. And he's like, wow, okay, we better get moving. That's the prayer she's saying, that we're going to buy someone um, a house and give it paid off, you know, and we're going to give 10 houses away. Well, we've never given one house away. Those are big prayers. You know, we used to joke and say, hey, we want to just buy somebody a car. We used to say that, remember? I said a couple of times. Not so much joking. Well, way, but we said it would be nice to buy someone uh, a car. We would say it without a whole lot of belief. Yes. And then we had an opportunity <laughs> to buy somebody a car, and we bought them a car. And, and then twice. And then this last year, another opportunity came up, and we blessed another person with a car. And we're like, it's not us, you guys. No. It's not us. God just said, do you believe me now? Because when you two are together and you're walking the walk that I'm intending for you to walk, there's nothing. He owns it all, guys. And he will present those opportunities in ways that you didn't think of. Absolutely. And 99.9% .9 of the time, the way that you didn't think of, his way is 100 times better than what you thought. Uh, and it, it just blows me away. We were, we were just really just inundated with that this, this last week. Um, we were on a business trip, and we were in sync. We were in, you know, in union, in okay. step, um, common purpose, doing things. Um, now there, there was, you know, some, some strife, a little bit, you know, but we're, we are human. But when we were together, common purpose, common goal, common I vision. Strife. I was like, when was there strife? Sorry, squirrel. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, but it, it just shows out and shows out and shows out. And the, the, the thing I love about that is even when we weren't on the same page 100%, other opportunities presented themselves to us. And, and it was all God. It was all God. We knew it was all God. And I love this because um, just in, 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 in your idea, what is a perfect marriage? Spout it out. Any idea what a perfect marriage is? Not arguing. Not arguing. Not arguing. Having fun. Having fun together. Just what else? Simple joy. Simple joy. Peace. Peace. You said, do what I say. <laughs> do what I say. <laughs> do what I say. <laughs> Anything Any else? Any other thoughts? Being best friends. Being best friends. Respect for one another. Respect for one another. And that's the, sorry, go ahead. Agree with each other. Agree with each other. That's the most important thing for any man is honor and respect. It's not even sex. But honor and respect inside the bedroom and outside the bedroom and everywhere else. And do you guys remember what we've talked about all the time? What's the most important thing for women? Security. What was it? Security. 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 Security is the highest form. Is that for a woman to feel secure? So, secure. so here's something to wrap your brain around. I love this one. So, a perfect marriage, and I'm going to put this into another context that, that just really hit home with me. Um, perfect marriage is two imperfect people who are unwilling to give up on each other. That's a perfect marriage. And why do I, why, do, why does that? just sit so well with me? What about our relationship with God? True faith is knowing no matter what valley I may be walking through, no matter what challenge I'm facing, no matter what struggle I may be having, that God will never give up on me. Ever, ever, ever. So we've said it in these classes before. We've talked about it before. Marriage is the classroom that God wants you to learn how to have a relationship with him. So good, Jeff. That is so right. Learn this. You want this relationship to be the most important relationship, but you learn this. And it makes you stronger. It makes you wiser. It makes you more vulnerable. It makes you more transparent. God knows all. God sees all. But if you can learn in this relationship with your spouse to be vulnerable, 
where they see all. They know all. Does, does that just, that, that just makes me, it, it almost makes me quake in my shoes. What's been the big thing for me is this last two months is um, being two servants madly in love. I have showed up as a master. Okay. And, and when I, and I don't say that about you because I'm not, I'm really wanting to make it about me and not po poking fingers at you, is I show up and if he doesn't do it right or say it right or drive right or, you know, tell me stuff right or love me the right way or talk to me or be there for me, um, it becomes a master relationship. Like, I want him to save my business and make our business grow. And that's a master relationship. But when I come as a servant and say, what do you need so that we can go here, and I become a servant, God's proud of me. And God can move everything out of the way. Because when I put my faith in Jeff, and I want Jeff to do it, then I move God from that place. And I said, okay, I need him to do it, not you. And he says, wow, we'll see how that works. And that's the part that I need to run to God more, and I need to go to him first, and I need to pray every single day. And I do pray, and I say good morning to him and everything else, but I really need to get more spiritual time where it's just me and him. Because Jeff, and I never knew this, because this is our second and last marriage. In my first marriage, I never looked at that. I looked at the other person as he didn't complete me. And he wasn't the right person. And he didn't do the right things, and he clearly isn't who God designed for me. But God's like, really? Because this journey's about me and you, Michelle. You haven't been married to me. And I can never make this work without making this work. And the more I look at Jeff to fulfill that need, because everybody wants acceptance, validation, security, and their purpose here on this earth. I'm not her God. He's not my God. And, and the minute she I should Jeff, never put me in the position to take the place of God. God gave me him to enjoy him, to love him, to serve him, to bless him. And in return, Jeff will fulfill all those needs. And heal you. And heal me. Just and heal me through the process. Me. This is a really good point. Jeff, can you read this last line? Which one? This one that I love that you put in here. Oh, uh, the, the modern day excuse of incompatibility uh, is being used as a result, uh, as a reason. Uh, it actually was, they did a little bit of research on this, and they, they found that a lot of people are divorcing using the explanation of incompatibility. <laughs> And that whole idea is completely backwards. Because if you think about how God puts us in, in a marriage with somebody who is typically, almost always, very, very different, oil and water, there's a lot of incompatibilities that we share. I've got opinions, very strong opinions, about certain things that she completely dis well that she disagrees with that I don't validate that don't I don't validate because I have my grew up being controlling and I wore that label I'm controlling I'm bossy I mean and do you think that God didn't know that when he put us together when I prayed for him it's just like Joyce Meyer and Dave you know Dave prayed for someone that he was going to be able to help and, and teach and boy did he have his hands full when he married <laughs> Joyce Myers and she says it all the time but look how good God is. In her first marriage, her first son she named Dave. David. That's her first son's name from someone else. God knew who was coming. God knew who was coming. He has abandonment issues and he does not want to be controlled. Why do you think God gave him someone like me? It's to heal those people. Somebody who likes taking control of the situation. Yeah. And if you don't agree with her way, she's going to take care of it and go on her own way. Yes. Without you. Yeah. So yeah, that just plays on all my fun stuff. Just number one thing is to scuba dive, which I do not understand how he wants to be deep down in the ocean, about 30, 40 feet in the water. And, Typically. And his number one thing that he's afraid of is sharks. So don't go in the water. Wouldn't you say that? But no, he's done how many times? Uh, 60 something. 60 some times. Me, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to trust that regulator. He's like, he'll breathe for you. No, I can breathe fine by myself. Because do it myself. I have to do it myself. <laughs> so I'm not going to go in the water because of my fear of being in control. And I can't control the shark. I can't control the fish. I can't control Jeff. I can't control the tank. I can't control. So I go to the spa and Jeff goes down in the water. <laughs> she can control how hard the masseuse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hard but it's a compromise. 
because I say, where do you want to dive? Because you can go dive, and then I'll go do this. So it's it's always, and he doesn't push me to go learn. And I love what Joyce says. He wants to go, and she doesn't want to go. She has to have an interest, but she doesn't have to go. So I just think it's interesting in how you balance. We're so opposite, Jeff and I. Opposite. We have a lot of incompatib uh, or, uh, incompatibilities that, when given the chance to grow, Iron sharpens, iron sharpens iron. And I'm here to heal you, and you're here to heal me. So it's great. Uh, if, if you've ever looked at a block of iron, I don't know if you've ever looked at a block of iron, it's kind of rough, and it's hard. And if you started scraping those things together, there'd be some friction. There'd be some stuff that might fall off. There'd be some heat. So think about incompatibility. But if you're doing <laughs> iron against iron, Eventually, it starts to sharpen. Eventually, it starts to smooth. Eventually, it starts to groove together. Yeah. So why, starts... why would they say iron sharpens iron if that if there wasn't an, an incompatible surface, an incompatible substance that when you put them against each other, put them together, that something amazing comes out of it? Oh, I just thought of something. Every time you don't understand what I'm saying, like earlier, he I'm just going to say, I'm sharpening you. I'm right. sharpening you. <laughs> sharpening you. Well, that's, that's one of the nicer things you could say. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I was going to say on that part about, uh, oh, in, in, there was a study that was done um, in 1930. And you guys, guess, just throw numbers out. How many, how many marriages do you think were in 1930s, percentage-wise? How many marriages? How many pe people? How many married? people? How many couples were married in 1930? What percentage out of 100 that were married at the time? Just at that time. What did I say? 30. I'd say 80. 80. 89. 89. 89 percent were married. Do you know how many marriages? How many people are married? The percentage in the, that we have today in the 2000s? 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. 23. 50. 49 percent of people are married. 49.7. And the majority of them are living together because they don't want to make the commitment to one another just because they don't know if it's going to work out. Yeah. Can you imagine, I mean, the difference of what we're te teaching our children and our grandchildren? And we have, um, and we're very transparent. We don't lie or hold anything back. We have a son that's dead to be with his girlfriend for eight years. And we've been praying for them and talking about it. But I talked to him so in depth of everything and including their other friends. And it is more acceptable for someone to shack up or live with each other and have children and not be married than it is to just go get married first in his 20-year-old group than to go get married and wait and have a child. It's just common. And it's the world. So in this class, what I, one of the things that I would love for you all to take with you to share when you hear relatives, nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters, friends, work associates, talking about marriage. Um, they, they talk about this in the book as well. One of the first things that I would, I always give, you can take this for whatever you will, I would suggest that you use this as well. Anytime that I talk to anybody when they're, they're talking about getting married, is I remind them that that day is for them and them alone. That it's not for anybody else. It's not for the parents, it's not for the relatives, it's not for the kids, it's not for the guests, it's not for anybody else. Don't spend a ton of time planning it one day. Don't spend a ton of money on it. It's one day. What I really think you should do is spend a bunch of time and money if you need to going on retreats, going to classes, and start talking about what's important in marriage. What is what does marriage look like to you? Right. What do you expect? Because if you have that conversation before you're even married, if you go to a class, saving your marriage before it starts, if you pour into yourself before you're even married, you should have a license to get planned to get married. <laughs> yes, and I agree. I can't wait till, and I can see it already, um, we have marriage before it starts, we have marriage works when you're married, and there's several other marriage classes on Sundays, um, Mary and Melvin, and then Sherry and Richard's class, and I can't wait till we can all sit together and see the progress. 
Because if you start there, you come here, and you can continue growing and educating your marriage, you don't end up in divorce care that just started recently. And there's so much heaviness in divorce care. And I've been divorced, Jeff's been divorced, and some of you all, some of you may have experienced a divorce. And um, I know the pain where they're at, but if you're not willing to do the work in pre-marriage, and then if you're definitely not willing to do the, mar- the work here in this, there, we always used to say, there is, people say there is no option, and we tell everybody there is an option. And we see it all the time. 49% of the people are married now, half of that marriage population is gone because there is an option. And the worst marriage is you never end it, and I see people married still, and they are not in relationship together. It's a cable company marriage. It's the total cable couple marriage. You want to tell them what that is? <laughs> they, they talk about the cable company marriage in this book, and I love the example. So have you all talked to a cable company? Have you all had anybody from a cable company try to get you to do their service? It used to be long distance before. Yeah. <laughs> Long distance, what it, but it's, it's the cable company reference that they use. So they'll call you, they'll woo you, they'll tell you all the things they're going to give you, they're going to tell you how spectacular it is, they're going to tell you all the great things you're going to get. How spectacular they are. How, how amazing they are. What's the package? We're going to give you this package. Well, if you've noticed, if you've sign the contract with a cable company. Typically what they do is they usually raise the rates on you. Um, the box stops. They don't, the the box stops. They don't, they don't deliver what they, what they said they were going to deliver. <laughs> right? So what ends up happening, what ends up happening is typically people look for a different cable company. Right? And while you're in that contract with the cable company, you just, it's its like, okay, so the cable company's taking me for granted. I don't really like that. So we're in a cable company marriage now. So I, I, I'm just taking for granted, you know what, I'm not even going to use that example. Uh, in a marriage, I'm taking for granted that I've, I've got this great package. I'm taking taking for granted that I've got somebody that's, that's actually giving me probably a lot of what they said they were going to give me. Um, for the value that they said was going to be the value, when I take it for, 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 for granted, because I feel like I deserve something more than that, or I didn't get what they, they said they were really going to get. Be careful of being in that cable company marriage, because one of the last things that anybody should do, or you want, you want to avoid putting yourself in that position, is looking for the better deal. And in the better because you're deal, still going to get a crappy package just moving on and not taking care of what needs to be taken And I of. love what you're saying there because the better deal sometimes isn't another uh, male or female. It's sometimes the job. It's sometimes golf. It's sometimes substance abuse, alcohol. It could be um, pornography. It could be spending. Jen and I have been talking a lot about holding each other accountable about spending. We feel fulfilled. I'm sorry, I won't speak for Jen. I feel fulfilled doing that. Because it takes my eyes off something else. And that's a programming. And other people do other things. But what what happens is, I thought about what he said earlier about Adam and Eve. There was no clothes on them. They were completely in love and joyful and just in this awe awe of each other. They were in paradise. There was nothing about plastic surgery or clothing or name brands. And, And they got to see each other. Can you imagine if we could show up and see each other in that vulnerability and not be afraid? I mean, I've been married to Jeff for 10 years. Full transparency. I have some insecurities that I still have never shared with him. And the one thing that I know is I, I know you guys are in shock. I talk a lot. And there are sometimes he says like, whoa, you don't need to share everything. So then that insecurity that I don't want to share with him, whatever it is, the way I see myself or what's going on or something like that, the the enemy will say, like, don't share that with him. He's not going to accept you for that. Or don't share this. And I've asked him the same thing. Like, is there stuff that you have? He goes, absolutely. Now, we don't mean, like, cheating or anything like that, but we mean insecurities within ourselves. And I talk to a lot of married couples that we we either counsel or just friends or friends of ours or they counsel us. Perfect example of that is I don't feel comfortable, um, I don't feel the ability
ability to be naked enough with my wife to tell her that as a young teenager, I, I ran around my apartment complex and spray painted a wall. I was kind of a butthead teenager. I mean, that's just one of those things. It makes me look bad, and it doesn't feel good. I told but you. Yeah. I'm now being transparent. I'm now being naked in the, the terminology of the book and, and saying, hey, so I, I want you to love me, all of me, for everything that I've done. The truth is, is I was kind of a butthead teenager. She kind of knows that. That's what God waited for you to meet me. Right. I had to mature. I had to mature. I had to, I had to get her in a relationship with God, first and foremost. I've always had a spiritual relationship with God, but I didn't have a true relationship with God until I got older and, and became more mature, spiritually. I, I love that. And God knows all our insecurities, and... He's the one that we should be running to first and telling him and say, and I should be checking with him and say, when do I let my spouse know that? So we went through the, the last six weeks or seven weeks about goals and money, and that's been our thing is Jeff respects money. I, I never would respect money until now. And um, we were very poor growing up, and if my mom said, yeah, you can take you know money lunch money out of my thing, I would just disrespect her and take all her change or all her tips or all her money. And I never respected money. I'd give it away. Jeff teases me like if we go somewhere, he gives me 20 bucks, and he's like, it'll be gone in the first two minutes. And he's right. And what has uncovered through it is I recall the thing where I personally wrote a bad check. And I knew I was going to bounce the check. This was all coming up through this marriage thing we did six weeks ago. And I told Jeff, hey, I purposely went to the grocery store, and I was in my old marriage, and I was going to bounce this check. So I had two full baskets of groceries. And and all this stuff, and I started telling them all about this, and I said, I called the store since then, and they're like, we don't know what you're talking about. There's no way we would find this check. There's no way in the store. It's not even here in Texas. It's in Arizona. And I had to let that go before I could move forward. And I looked at him because we live in security. I said, did you ever steal any money when you were growing up? And he's like, yeah. He told me about a situation at Burger King that he worked for $40. That's full transparency. That's being completely naked in front of each other and saying, here's what I did. What did you do? And if he would have judged me and said, oh, my gosh, I thought you were this great Christian girl and you never have done wrong. How could you have stole from somebody? <laughs> yeah. And uh, laughing about that and making me feel insecure. Do you think I would have ever went deeper with that? No. Mike's like, heck, no, you would. And here's, here's a very, very, very important part. Intimacy is about this vulnerability and this transparency. I have never been more in love with my wife when I'm transparent with her, when I'm truthful, with, in, in the most truthful sense. Because there's there's a different, I'm going off on a trail here. No, but, wait, wait, I want you to see that for a second. Because what happens right there, what he just said, that hits me is the only way he could be fully transparent with me if he feels safe and secure too. Very true. Very true. And when I'm at odds with him, I make him feel unsecure with me, insecure with me. And he runs from being transparent with me. I and I do the, the same the, with him. The male brick wall. I yes. just put up the brick wall. And everyone does. The reason I tell my best friend everything, even more than my husband, is because she makes me feel safe. She made women have the best counseling because we have girlfriends. And I tell her everything. So what I haven't told you is I lost a brother-in-law a couple days ago to um he didn't mean to kill he didn't mean to kill himself, but he um bought some pills off somebody that I found out now too that two other people have overdosed. So he got something bad. And I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I had my sister went to heaven a long time ago, it was her husband. And we haven't been very close to him. And this week we got that phone call, and it was um it was very heartbreaking. And he asked me to post something, and I didn't want to post it because the enemy says you don't want people to see that you have issues in your family like that. And that's where the enemy lies, because it's such a lie. Because if I can help one person that has lost a family member, I'm sick and tired of people drinking and doing drugs because they can't be transparent. And the enemy messes with them there and keeps them in bondage. 
He has been heartbroken since the day my sister died. And it's been seven years since she went to heaven. And he's almost going home exactly the same seven years to the day of when she passed away. And he's always loved her, and he never took off his wedding ring, even after everything that happened to her. And because the enemy, like that movie, The Shack, God says, I have to take you back to the shack because that's where I lost you. That's why that movie, The Shack, is so amazing because if you get lost in stuff because of a divorce or because of a marriage or because of an affair or because of drugs, he takes you back there so he can heal you from that place. Again and again. Because if he doesn't, the enemy will continue to attack you in that space. And when you go back to where you were broken and you say, this is me, God. This He already knows. He just wants you to tell him so he can walk with you. See, I can't have a great marriage until I'm vulnerable with him first. Amen. And then I can be vulnerable with him. But the only way I can be vulnerable with him is if he makes me feel safe. And he doesn't understand what our family has because, unfortunately, Jeff, unfortunately, you haven't, he hasn't dealt with that stuff. So I immediately <laughs> want to go pay for the funeral. I want to go over there. I want to drive someone home. I want to do this. He's like, whoa. Let's relax here. See, God says, you can have a little Michelle, but you have to have a lot of Jeff. Because I'm always in rescue mode. And Jeff says, we can't live there. Immediately, I'm like, I have no business buying this. Because she has the tendency to put herself in the place of God. Absolutely. She, she wants she wants to rush in and save everybody and make everybody feel good, which are good traits. They are very, very good traits. But I do that without checking with him first. Right. right. Is, is this of me, or is this of you, God? Give me the card, Give me the card, yeah. Give me the card, yeah. God would not prompt you to tell something that can help somebody. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he would prompt you to do that. The enemy would tell you not to do it. Amen. Because of your right. pride, you write yourself a shirt. So you need to post that, because somebody needs to hear it. It's you selfish and pride. It's not in this classroom, somewhere on Facebook that needs to share it, that somebody needs to hear that word. Amen. Yeah, somebody needs to know there's hope. Somebody needs to, might be wanting to do it. Yes. We'll stop doing yes. it because you were prompted to post that and you need to post it. And here's my full transparency, which I haven't even shared with you, is it was $2,000 because we're short some money and we're all giving. And I thought the enemy immediately convicted me and said, um, you're, you're going to ask your friends and family for money when they know what you make. Cover the, the flipping, I said something else, cover the flipping bill. That was my shame is because, now God never told me to cover the bill. We prayed, and he, I asked him on the amount, and he said, I'm fine with you giving that amount. And But my pride came in and said, I'm going to post this and ask people for money? I mean, we're the ones giving people money. How dare you post that? That's where the pride came in. And then I even said, I'm being fully transparent, is I said, I don't like the picture of him. Can they change the picture? Can they up the price? I have nothing to do with this. This is his family. And it's all, it becomes so selfish and so selfish when we show up that way. It became no, no more about Robert and the need. It became about Michelle. And that's the controllingness that I fight against every single day, putting the backpack on. Do you feel better saying this? I feel, How does that feel getting that out? I feel relieved that when I let it out and put it in the light, God says, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm and so proud of you. So what I'm going to ask is I'm asking for your commitment. In this class, I'm asking for your commitment to be a little bit more vulnerable with your spouse this next week every single day just a little bit more vulnerable share something be a little bit more transparent because uh, I, I, I really highlighted this <clears throat> the strength of your commitment will always determine the strength of your marriage. So if you can, actually, you know what? Don't give me the commitment. Michelle, I commit to you for the next week that I'm going to be more vulnerable, more transparent, more truthful with you to make our marriage better. I give you that commitment. And I give you that same commitment. And I suggest you doing the same thing with your, your spouse. One of my, one of my big issues or concerns, or whatever you want to call it, self-doubt with that, is being you know, the man, the head of the household, by telling her a situation that we're in. I'm not protecting her from that situation. So Tell me what no, that means. 
or if it's a money issue or if it's something that, that has happened at work or whatever. There's nothing she can do to fix it. I'm not words of affirmation. I'm not quality of time. I don't need to talk about it. And so I feel bad about telling her because I feel that now, now she's going to have, I know the stress she's going through with her job. Now she's going to have this stress on top of her of going, oh my gosh, what about this? What's going on with my I hope things are okay. I love that. I feel bad that I'm giving her, I feel like I'm giving her that stress. So I love that. So why don't you, because you know that, because that's something you're aware of and you pray about it, and maybe yours is saying, do you feel loved? Because I feel super loved. Do you feel vulnerable in this relationship? Maybe you ask those questions. It doesn't have to be about that. And do you feel like you'd be stronger telling her or not? And that's so. the part, because remember, if you don't check it here first, you can't check it here. There's some stuff I need to talk to Jeff about, and yeah, we got to wrap it up, that I have talked to Jeff about, but it hasn't been the right timing. And Jen says it all the time. I have to ask God before I can bring this to Michael. And if, if, if God's telling you not to do that because that's a burden, then don't do it. You may, you may do something else. Well, Amy, and, and most of the times when I do end up telling her, it's a relief on her. Because she can sense something's going on, yep. and then in her mind she's thinking it must be something with us. And right. We Bingo. always make that up. Yeah. yeah. Women Bingo. always. Make, did you guys hear what he said? Say that again. That's a huge it's, revelation. That's a huge big revelation. Say that again. It's, so most of the time, whenever I tell her what's going on, she's relieved because she can sense something's going on, and she's thinking in her mind it must be about us when in fact it has nothing to do with it. And, and, and truth, I'm trying to protect her from what's going on. Yeah. And whenever I tell her, it's, oh, I thought maybe there's something going on with us. Like, no, it's not. I feel maybe. it in the spirit. I feel it in our home. The dynamic has yeah. changed. But now he knows I'm an achiever. I'm futuristic. I'm positive. I'm going to battle this thing on my knees. Yep. So, I mean, so I'm not going to sit there and crumble at it. I'm going to say, nope, I know who God called us to be. Do we need to change? Do we need to modify? Nope, God's going to move it out of the yep. way. That's and then we the war together. And then we make that something that we pray about in the morning. We take that thing we got to close. Right. What you just said, though, is opposite of what he's, what the enemy's trying to yeah. tell him. If I take and give her the burden, and you just said, I take it to the throne, and I battle what you just he's said. He's isolated. Yes. He's not telling you. That's yes. What the enemy operates and that's what the enemy wants to keep him is you need to worry yeah. about this. You're the man of this house. You carry the burden. You put the brick on. You don't protect her because that's not from God. Because yep. if you can fight on your knees and he can fight mentally and physically yeah. and emotionally, then you guys are both winning. It's the savings account. And next week, we're going to continue the book. And if we do it all naked, then we're even better. I yeah. love naked. Love naked. You guys, naked. Do it. You guys do it naked? Is that what you're saying? Naked communication. Naked communication. <laughs> Which, if, if you missed it, that's the book we're teaching from. Naked marriage. That's why we're, we're all talking about marriage. We're going to answer your question. We'll pray in that because you guys could be excused. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the words that were spoken today, Father. We thank you, Father, that every um, bondage, everything that, um, that people and couples are going through, including Jeff and I, Father, we demand them to be un, um, unbonded, Father, un, unloosed, Father, in um, this day, right now, today, Father, that we won't walk out of here with heaviness or burden, Father. We'll walk out of here with clarity. We'll walk out with your love, your grace, your mercy, Father. We thank you that we can look at our spouses and not be ashamed of who we are and not be ashamed of our past and not be ashamed of what we're going through today, Father, that you brought them together for a reason and there's nothing they can't get through with you on their side. So we ask you, Father, that each and every day they will fall more in love with you and more in love with each other. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Were you going to ask something?